Welcome, Matterporters. Thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate your attendance. Uh, we're going to give a couple more uh, seconds here for other people to uh, come on in. Uh, but in the meantime, I uh, just wanted to go ahead and let you know who we've got with us and uh, what we'll be talking about. So uh, today with us back again is Kirk Stromberg. Thank you so much, Kirk, for joining us. Hey, everybody. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, Matterport Capture on Android and a little bit about Capture with uh, iOS LiDAR. All right. Uh, very much looking forward to that. I know a lot of people are uh, waiting for news about Android and you know its compatibilities and whatnot, so looking forward to getting into that. We also have with us again uh, Elizabeth Favosi, who will be uh, helping us with questions and whatnot. Uh, hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Hi, team. How are you? <laughs> um, so, okay. So let me just go ahead and uh, get the slideshow going here. All right, here we go. Um, so Shop Talk 14, again, thank you very much uh, for participating. And uh, as Kurt just mentioned, we'll be talking about uh, beta, its functionality for uh, Android and the um, iPhone uh, 12 Pro with LiDAR. So very exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, let's take it away. Um, okay, Kirk, what you got? All right, let's um, take a look first at our lineup of cameras and devices that we can use to capture space. And we'll talk specifically about what the Android beta supports at the moment and what's gonna be supported in upcoming releases. So starting on the left, uh, we currently support the Matter 2 Pro 2 camera. And uh, at the moment, we don't support the original Pro 1 camera, but that's gonna be coming very soon. So you can use that with the current Android beta. Uh, moving over, the Leica BLK360 is a high-end LiDAR device, and we currently don't support that in the Android beta. We do obviously on iOS. Uh, this is in the queue for support later, but right now we're focused on the original Pro camera and our 360 cameras. Uh, speaking of 360 cameras, let's move over into the center section. So we have six 360 camera models that we currently support. In the middle, we have the original is the 360 1X, the Theta Z1, and the Theta V. These are the original cameras that we supported on iOS. And these are the 360 cameras that we originally supported uh, in the early part of the Android capture beta. Now, uh, over the summer, Insta360 announced and released the Insta360 1R. This is a modular camera so that there's different modules that you can use with it. When you have the 360 module installed, we can support that with the Android beta as well because we capture a spherical image with it. The other modules are narrow field of view cameras and we don't support those because you can't capture a full spherical image to create the space. Now, recently we also added support for the Ricoh Theta SC2. This camera has been around for a while, so we're a little bit uh, slow to the game and getting support for that, but that is now supported in the Android beta as well. Last month, the uh, Insta360 team also introduced the One X2, and that is also supported with the current Android beta. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about um, the specific cameras, their known issues, and what we're still working on uh, in a second. So that's kind of the lineup for the mid-range, the 360 cameras, uh, an ever-expanding set of options that you can use to uh, capture a space. Now on iOS, we also have Matterport for iPhone, and that's uh, that allows you to capture space just with the phone that you've got. And this involves you rotating around in a space, capturing a 360 image. We convert that to 3D, and then you move to your next position, do another capture, and create your space that way. Again, no external camera connected, just with the phone or iPad that you have. That mechanism or that technique is not yet supported in the Android beta. That will be coming in our second beta, our second beta two, uh, which will be coming in Q1. And that'll be allow you to use your Android phone to rotate around in the space, capture a spherical image, and then synthesize the, the 3D from that. Initially, we're probably going to be focusing on flagship Android phones that have ultra wide cameras. Similar to the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12, the ultra-wide cameras give you a really wide field of view, and it lets you move through a space and capture that imagery in a, a much easier fashion than the narrow field of view cameras, where you have to capture more stops. Every time you do an additional stop, you introduce a, a possibility that there's parallax and stitching issues between the images. So we'll start there, uh, but we intend to bring the full complement of support to capture on Android. 
So the next slide, I'm not going to go through these details. This is something we're going to pop up on our support site. So as we get more and more cameras out there and we support um, a variety of different capture methods, it's important to try to keep up to date. And I say this uh, just from the rule of thumb is that you want to keep up to date in both your versions of capture, but you also want to keep up to date in the firmware that runs on your cameras. So there are some specific cameras that I just want to call out where it's very important that you have uh, a minimum version of firmware on those cameras. Uh, the 1R in particular, we started supporting over the summer with a beta build. That beta build is not automatically updated from the Insta360 uh, application. You have to manually go do that in terms of downloading the latest production build of firmware and cut over to that. Uh, with a, a manual method, not using the Insta360 app. So you can go to matterport.com slash beta, and there's more instructions there on how to do that. That's one call out. The One X2, it's a new camera. Uh, the Insta360 team is updating their firmware fairly rapidly. So there's uh, a new build out as of a week or two ago. Uh, again, you want to keep checking probably with your Insta360 or your Rico Theta app, or take a look on the website in terms of what the latest firmware is. The Matterport Capture app will start reminding you when it sees uh, a connected camera that has out-of-date firmware. And we just do this to make sure that you're aware that you've got older firmware on there, and it's always a, a better option to try to keep up to date to make sure that we've uh, been able to knock down bugs or performance issues or enable new features. So we'll get this up on the support site. Uh, I know it's an eye chart, but we want to make sure everybody's got a reference for like what's the minimum build of different betas, of different versions of capture, what's supported with what camera, uh, because it's getting to be a longer list and we need to make sure everybody has a, a nice crisp uh, reference. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the Android beta in terms of what's new. Uh, we've got a bunch of recent updates to the build. And again, you can get this on the Play Store. I'll go through some details about how to, how to get it. Uh, as I've talked about, the, the newer cameras, the SC2 and the 1X2, they're still in what I would call a shakedown phase. You know, we're still working with both of those teams to work out any kind of performance bugs, any kinds of issues that we're seeing interacting with those cameras. Sometimes that leads to a firmware change on the camera, or sometimes it leads to a change in capture. So those you still might expect some performance issues. Um, we are still working on image quality improvements for those, uh, especially the 1R, the 1X2, and the Theta SC, uh, SC2. In general, Capture uh, sets auto HDR and auto white balance with those cameras so that we can get a consistent uh, capture across the entire space. And then we do the final tuning for image quality in the cloud pipeline. And every camera is a little bit different. So we typically are tuning and trying to adjust parameters for those. So as you're capturing in the beta, this information is, is awesome. It's super helpful for us to be able to get a sense of where are we uh, a little bit off and where do we need to make some, some tuning adjustments there. Uh, we're in the phase for the, the beta one where we're now trying to work through our feature parity items. So we're trying to get to the point where basically we can say, okay, Aside from Matterport for iPhone, everything you've got on the iOS version of Capture, you've got on Android. So one of the things that is recent in the last two weeks to the beta is being able to convert a Place 360 to 3D. And for folks that are not familiar with this technique, this is uh, more common with the pro cameras where you might be trying to capture something in bright sun and the near infrared is interfering with our sensors in the pro cameras. And so uh, when you can't capture depth data in that situation, what you can do is you can take a 360 view, which is without depth data, place it into the model, place it into the location that you'd like it, and then in the menu you can tap convert to 360, convert to 3D, excuse me. This will synthesize a 3D uh, depth image from the uh, from just the 360 imagery, and it's not um, it's not affected by sunlight or near infrared like a regular 3D scan would be. And this is one way that you can fill in outdoors in challenging areas. So this is now available uh, on Android in the latest beta. Another thing that we recently brought to the build is what we call visual assisted alignment. And you may have heard of something called April tags. I, I should have printed one out to, to show everybody. Um, this, is, this is a technique and a feature that you would want to use when you're in uh, perhaps a large open space with a lot of repetitive imagery or any place where there's going to be a challenge uh, because the space looks very similar from scan to scan. So for instance, if you're in an auditorium where there's just rows and rows of identical seats, 
or you're in a really large open space, like maybe an open warehouse or uh, an open ballroom floor, where every time you're moving a different scan position, um, the imagery is very, very similar. And so that sometimes can confuse our alignment algorithms. And so what April tags do is they provide a unique marker that you can print on paper, put up, and they're unique tags. And when you turn on this feature in settings, when you scan and we attempt to align, we will now look specifically for April tags and we'll pay attention to which April tag we see in the scene. And that will help and assist the alignment process. And so in a repetitive environment where uh, some of the folks that have been doing Matterport scans for a while might remember, you know, at one point you used to have to put um, objects like trash cans and cones and, and something different in the scene to differentiate it. Um, we now make sure we're supporting April tags so that it's a little bit more, uh, it's easy to do in a consistent manner. And especially for super large spaces, you now have unique markers that you can use. All right, uh, working on the list. So I'll talk a little bit more about export and archive uh, single jobs in just a second. Um, in general, we wanna make it easier for you to take jobs off of a device, keep an archive of them, get them onto a different device if you need to switch devices. And we know this has been an issue now. There's, there's third-party tools uh, called iAmazing and iExplorer, which are super useful. And Amir has a whole bunch of videos and instructions up on the support site for how to use these tools to be making archives and moving things back and forth. What we're doing now, and I'll show in a second, is uh, within the app itself, we're making it easier to do a backup of your jobs and get them off to uh, some other location. Uh, we're supporting firmware updates for the Pro 2 cameras. Um, again, firmware for the third-party cameras, you have to do that through their applications or manually, but we will start warning when we see out-of-date firmware. Okay, let's talk um, a little bit about known issues. So it is, again, uh, it's a beta. That means that everything's not gonna be perfect. If you're using the Android Capture for commercial jobs, um, please keep that in mind. We know everybody wants to use it as fast as they can. Uh, we're trying to work through the performance issues. Right now, if you're comparing iOS and Android, you'll see that uh, Android is a little bit slower in terms of capturing, transferring, and aligning. And we're working through our performance improvements there. We've been trying to work on the underlying architecture for how we do this to make it more consistent and modern on both Android and iOS. And so part of this process has us working through a new architecture on Android and working the performance uh, angle so that we can get it to the point where it's just as fast as iOS. Uh, there's always going to be some bugs and stability issues. Again, we're trying to, to knock those down and play whack-a-mole with them. Uh, we have improved crash reporting and bug analysis in both versions of Capture now. So we're getting a little bit better about methodically finding out what's the top issues, what are the top crashes, and knocking them down. Uh, again, if you use both iOS and Android, you'll see that there's some visual differences, and we're now in the phase two where we're working performance, final bugs, and we'll get the fit, finish, and polish um, to get all the I's dotted and the T's crossed to get ready for release uh, coming in Q1. So I mentioned before, um, uh, you know, we want to be able to, to bring uh, what we do on the iPhone, metaphor for iPhone, where you rotate around. We want to bring that to Android. So that'll be coming in Q1, but that's going to come in the second release of Capture on Android, what we'll call beta two. So we'll start beta um, as soon as we've got something prototyped. And again, we'll end up, we'll release Android V1, and then we'll get the beta going for a smartphone capture. So this is, um, I just want to give a preview of something that you'll see in the current build. And this is a, an example of where in my Android Capture uh, instance, I have a whole bunch of jobs. And for whatever reason, maybe I need to move that particular uh, project or job over to a different device, or I just want to clear up space on the device, and I want to basically get this thing off and archive it. So in the help and support menu inside Capture, you can go in and, and pick export jobs. And when you open your export job menu, you'll see a list of the jobs that you see, like you would see in what we call the job browser the view that you see with the thumbnails of each of the jobs and it's, it should match exactly the names that you've given them in your uh, in your job browser so for this instance i'm going to pick the donner lake theta z1 job and select that and then uh, capture is going to go off and chew on this for a little bit and it's going to wrap up all that data and package everything up and create a zip file of that with the name that you've got from your job and then give you the share menu so you can decide uh, keep it locally onto your device, 
uh, pop it up to a cloud storage. On Android, on more modern Android devices, there's um, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a device to device nearby sharing, which is similar to the mechanism on iOS. So if you happen to have another Android device, you could essentially beam it over to them and so forth. So again, this is um, what we're trying to do is make it easier for you to manage your files. Uh, anybody who's gone into the jobs folder on capture knows that the current folder structure is such that um, it's not really meant for users to be working with because you'll notice the names of the folders are these really long alphanumeric strings. They're meant to be unique IDs. And so it's really important to not change those because that's how capture references all this stuff. So that's why we're trying to wrap these things up, give it friendly names, make it simple and easy for you to manage folders and files and move them back and forth. And for both iOS and Android, one of the next parts they'll be working on is a uh, seamless import. So you say, okay, great. I'm gonna pick up something that I've archived or exported from somebody else. Let's pull this into my local instance and take care of it there. So uh, I guess two things here. Um, one is this is not, this is all local, right? This is not a cloud restore or what we call cloud restore from Matterport's cloud. That is also in the queue where you'd be able to say, okay, I've got a good internet connection. I can browse my models and I want to be able to pull that down. That's not yet. This is all local uh, to your device and any other cloud instances that you have available, but it's not tied into our system yet. Um, one obvious question would be, okay, uh, transferring jobs between Android and iOS. There's still some sprinkles we're working out there. So you may find that transferring from Android to iOS is easier iOS to Android has some wrinkles if it's a duplicate. So I'd say right now, try to keep it within each platform. Uh, we're working on working out the kinks between export import across platforms. Okay, um, I think that is, yeah, let's go to the next slide then, Amir. Thank you. All right, so if you're not already using uh, the Android Capture beta, uh, again, it's for external cameras, uh, for connected cameras. Uh, we've got a couple items that we support on iOS that are not supported yet, but they're coming. The original Pro camera, the BLC 360 smartphone capture. Um, it's important right now to be on Android 8 or above. Um, Android's fairly fragmented. There's a lot of wireless carriers that kind of drag their feet in terms of doing Android updates. So uh, we've gone back through, we support 8, 9, 10, and 11. Um, for Android, that's still not a giant portion of the market because it's so fragmented, but that's where we've cut our line so far. The other element is that uh, since what we do is fairly performance intensive, you need a device with decent horsepower. And so at the moment for Android, we need three gigabyte of RAM or more. You should be able to find out uh, how much RAM is in your device, but this is one of the, the common things. If you go to the Play Store and you can't install Capture, um, it doesn't seem like it's available for your device. The typical reasons would be uh, the older version of Android before 8, before Oreo, uh, not enough RAM, physical RAM in the device. And again, this is not storage. This is, uh, this is working memory in terms of uh, being able to process things uh, in real time. Uh, there is a third element that uh, will also prevent you from installing Metaport Capture. And that's if you've, if you've unlocked your bootloader, if you've rooted your device, um, then right now, that's an unsecure environment for us in terms of our IP. So we don't allow installations on unlocked bootloaders or rooted devices. And if those terms don't make any sense, uh, then don't worry about it because it doesn't apply. So again, open beta. All you have to do is go to uh, the Play Store, search on Matterport. You'll find Capture. Um, no signups required. Um, uh, we highly recommend auto update. Play Store will keep you up to date. Uh, this is a little bit different than uh, how we do betas on excuse me, on iOS, where you have to use a separate app that test flight. On Android, it's really easy. You just use the same Play Store. You just find it, pop in, install, and you should be good to go. All right, so next topic. We'll do QA, uh, Q&A shortly. Um, just real quick, so switching gears here, back on iOS. Okay, so iOS Capture, we have a new beta available. And again, you go to matterport.com slash beta. Uh, Capture 4.1 is available. And on iOS, you have to use a separate app called Test Flight. This is Apple's distribution mechanism for beta apps. And so basically it's like the iOS app store, but uh, you opt in to test flight and then you install your beta apps through test flight. And so these are kind of separate distribution channels. So what's really exciting is that obviously everybody's probably heard about the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro 
iPhone 12 Pro Max supporting LiDAR. So they have active depth sensors that as you rotate, you sweep and you get uh, active depth sensing, kind of like a pro camera or, or a, a BLK360 camera. And you can get in a narrower field of view, actual depth, whereas currently we would, we would synthesize that kind of like with the 360 camera. So the benefits are that you should get more accurate data and the general stitching and alignment of the scans will be more robust because we are now actually reading the environment versus um, synthesizing or guessing as to what that is. Uh, this is also available on the latest iPad Pro, the 2020 edition. Um, that's a little bit more challenging because the camera array is off-center. So again, with any of these uh, handheld or mobile phone captures, it's uh, really important to uh, do exactly the opposite of what you probably would expect with a pano. With a pano, I am usually rotating around myself. And the thing is here, we, what we want to do is we want to actually rotate around the phone because we want to capture a spherical image and as much imagery around us without moving the phone too much because that can introduce what we call parallax errors. And that means just you'll get a glitch in the stitching from uh, image to image and device to device. And the end result is that your model might have glitches in it, uh, might not look that good. And in the worst case, uh, it might even not align scan to scan. Um, so it's it maybe a little bit hard to see in this particular screenshot, but uh, we use the wide field of view camera to capture the space. The LiDAR sensor on the iPhones is has a narrower field of view. So you'll see right around the target circle, you'll see a little dot pattern. Um, that's where we're actually getting LiDAR data. And so what we'll do here is basically where you've got LiDAR data, we're gonna use that for depth. When you don't have LiDAR data in a particular spot, we'll continue using just as we do now, uh, we'll synthesize with our Cortex AI and we'll synthesize the depth around that. And so that way you get to capture the whole space and you'll be able to get a higher fidelity read on your space as you go through this. Now, one of the obvious question is, um, can I move around and paint the space like I see with a lot of other third-party apps that are really focused just on depth and the point cloud and the mesh? You can do that um, as you capture. The, the danger is that you want to try and keep your phone as close to center as possible, because the more you move it around, uh, the, the higher the probability of introducing errors. Um, there's two other phones in the iPhone 12 lineup, the regular, I guess the, the, the normal, the, rain, the plain iPhone 12, and then the iPhone 12 mini. So neither of those devices have the LiDAR sensor on them. So we will continue working just as we do on the iPhone 11 and the earlier phones, the same way with smartphone capture. Um, we'll just use the imagery to synthesize depth. So um, with that, that beta is available. That's Capture 4.1. Um, outside of iPhone, uh, iPhone LiDAR, we're also continuing to chip away at uh, bugs and features and performance improvements. So even if you don't have an iPhone 12 with LiDAR, jump on the 4.1 beta. You should see some performance improvements. We're continuing to hammer down on bugs and issues that we've seen in prior releases. Um, and again, no sign up necessary. Go to matterport.com slash beta and follow the instructions there. Uh, the simplest method to get into test flight if you've never used it before is to enter the URL that we post on that site into mobile Safari. And if you do that on your device in mobile Safari, um, Apple will walk you through installing test flight and automatically enabling you for the beta um, and automatically enabling you for that build in there. So just, it's really easy. Um, if there's any problem, uh, you email capture uh, beta at matterport.com. Fantastic, awesome. Uh, thank you so much. That was uh, uh, a good amount of data to, to take in all at once. Uh, happy to answer all the questions uh, that you guys may have uh, regarding all that stuff. Uh, I know it's a lot to take in, but really appreciate that, Kirk. Um, by all means, you guys can, can feel free to uh, tackle the questions panel enter in all, any questions you want and uh, we'll get to them shortly here. So uh, with that said, just wanted to kind of touch on how else you can get support on all your questions uh, if they're related to this. Now is a great time. If they're not related to this, uh, if we have time today, awesome. Uh, if we don't, go to matterport.com and you'll see the resources tab there uh, at the top. And if you click on that, you'll find support. That'll get you to our kind of support hub uh, where you can uh, find you know, uh, the most common frequently asked questions uh, linked to our support center where you'll find like 
hundreds of articles uh, that talk about everything uh, related to Matterport uh, and so on and so forth, uh, as well as the phone number. This phone number that you see on the screen, uh, 408-805-3347 is relevant to anybody in the US. If you're not in the US, however, and you go to that page, scroll down to the bottom where the phone number is located and you'll see the correct phone number for you. Um, you can also email the support team at support at matterport.com. And, uh, and that's about it. Uh, as always, you know, I mention this every time, but it's super important to always make sure that your contact information in your account is up to date. Uh, anytime we send out an email that is relevant to your account, things that, that really important that you want to make sure you get, they're sent to the email that's registered in your account. So if you don't update that and make sure that it is current, uh, you won't see those emails. So super important. And then if you're interested in just keeping a finger on the pulse at everything Matterport, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Matterport. We're constantly updating all of the updates uh, that you'll see there relevant to uh, latest beta releases, uh, like we're talking about here, um, anything that, that's coming down the, the pipeline uh, and recently released, you'll, you'll find it there. So a good place to get some more information. And, you know, we have a uh, Facebook group as well called Moog, that's M-O-U-G for Matterport Official User Group. Uh, you can find that by searching Moog on Facebook and you'll get uh, to um, become a part of a really amazing group of uh, people who are using Matterport day in and day out uh, and know it through and through. So if you have any, um, I guess, support in that, not technical related questions, but more like business related, like how can I, uh, you know, uh, penetrate this, this market in my, uh, in my geo, uh, that's a great place to, to ask those types of questions. Uh, and we do see in Moog a lot of really amazing spaces uh, being posted. It's a great place to kind of get better by showing people uh, who are doing this, your work, your scans, and get um, some feedback from them. Uh, and if you want, you can go to go.manaport.com slash nominate dash your dash space to uh, nominate your space to be put in our gallery of spaces and destination everywhere site. Um, so also looking forward to uh, seeing some of your amazing spaces there. Uh, and with that said, I am going to go ahead and stop sharing so we can just get a better glimpse, or at least so I can get a better glimpse of uh, Q&A panel here. And uh, all right, Elizabeth. All right. So questions. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions here. First question comes from Jim. It says, do you have any suggestions when using Thetas in large homes for improving connectivity? So it doesn't take so long to complete the scan if you're having to go a further distance to stay out of the image. We use a Matterport and the Thetas. When using your Matterport, this isn't an issue, but with the Thetas, it takes longer to complete the scan by trying to further your distance from the camera. We are using an iPad. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. So it's a good question, uh, Jim. And this is something that folks have noticed too, that 360 cameras in general um, tend to have a little bit lower range. And I have definitely experienced exactly what you're talking about, where you've got to like sometimes peek your, your iPad or your iOS device around the corner just to get a little bit liner, better line of sight to the um, to the device. So there's a, a couple of things you can do. Um, one is, and I, I believe this is correct, and I, it's been a while since I've checked, the Thetas, I think you can in the... In the the Rico app, you can switch between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So 2.4 generally has better range, um, but slower bandwidth. 5 has uh, higher bandwidth, slower range. That might be a help. That might not be. Um, so one of the things that's in our queue, uh, uh, which for folks who have been with us for a while know that's still in our queue, is uh, what we call split mode or half and half mode. And so the notion here is you could be near the camera, take one shot, walk around to the other side, take another shot, and we would erase you from the shot. Um, the the Rico uh, cameras also have a plugin environment. And so third party developers can create plugins for the Rico Theta. And one of them is a timer. And so one of the common requests has been, can we get a timer of some sort so you could set it off and then go run and then come back. Um, one of the downsides there is just the hassles of reconnecting and so forth. What we want to do is try to provide a method for all cameras, not just the Thetas or the Insta cameras. We want to try and provide a mechanism to do that. 
in larger spaces, such that you could uh, capture that without having uh, connectivity distance problems. Um, so no great solution for you yet. Um, take a look to see if you can switch the device to a different frequency. Um, obviously in apartments or places where there's a ton of Wi-Fi going on, um, your range typically could be a little bit more challenging just because you're fighting for bandwidth. Awesome, thank you so much, Kurt. Next question comes from Rob. And there was another question along these same lines earlier, is that do we see a day coming when we use uh, LiDAR to capture measurements to convert to things like TruePlan um, with either iPhone or the Android devices that have a LiDAR component or floor plans as well? As we go through and expand the array of devices that we're supporting, um, characterizing the measurement quality and characterizing the quality of those spaces is a key thing to do. And this is um, this is unfortunately a thing where it would be great to have just one simple number where it's say, oh, it's plus or minus X. But the problem is that I think as everybody knows, it depends on the space, how you're capturing the space, what kind of measurement you wanna do. Is it a big measurement, a small measurement? So your tolerances in those things are gonna de depend. And unfortunately the answer is it depends. So um, we are trying to characterize it through the beta. We wanna characterize uh, what LiDAR brings to us in terms of the improvements of that. Because obviously if we can get to the point where we can say, okay, this, if you're, if you're doing a good scanning technique, this is now sufficient to be able to enable a bunch of assets where you could reasonably reliably take those uh, kinds of measurements and, and create those kinds of assets. So I think right now stand by for um, more on that in terms of us characterizing what we think that's good for and when it's not. We wanna give guidance to be able to say, okay, in these situations, this is looking pretty good. In those situations, probably need to use a different technique. And I don't know if Elizabeth you want to add anything to that around cheap planner stuff. No, I thought that was that was excellent. I think that's that's exactly why we need to um, we are approaching uh, through, uh, assets that include measurements with lidar this way. We just want to make sure that we are producing things that make sense for the use case. So uh, the next question we have here is from Juan. It says, on a pro camera, I can switch to 360 panorama to 3D. So I think this is around the 360 to 3D conversions. Yes, yeah. So on, on any of the devices that we support or any any mechanism by which you would capture, um, well, I'll, I'll back up a second. So our normal mode of operation is you're capturing a 3D shot and you're, you're, we're synthesizing that in and we're trying to build a model from it. There are instances where that is not really uh, desired. Like for instance, if you say I've got a model of a structure, but I really want to give a view from the, the street, but the street is uh, you know 50 meters away. And I don't want to have a long path out to the street because it'd just be annoying for the viewer to actually walk down there. You can take a 360 view and place it um, 50 meters from the model or some distance from the model to give the impression uh, for the user that you're going out to the street, you're seeing the structure from the street and you're going back. So that's one bucket where you would use 360 views placed in the model. Obviously folks will use 360 views if they just want the imagery, um, they wanna be able to incorporate that into their tours. So what Juan is talking about is when you place the 360 next to the model, like what I was referring to earlier, there are instances where you, you really do actually want that to be part of the 3D tour. And so you can place the 360 in that location and then you tap on the 360, you tap on the little circle icon, uh, and there's a menu option that will say convert to 3D. And when you do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Cortex, uh, just like we would with the 360 camera, synthesize the 3D data, take the location that you've placed the 360 and the surrounding 3D scans and attempt to align it. Now, you do need other 3D scans around to align too, um, but we found that this is fairly successful um, in, in circumstances where it's challenging to take a normal 3D view. So absolutely yes, you can do that with any camera or any source. Awesome, thank you, Kirk. Uh, this one's kind of a fun one. This one's from Linda. It says, if I'm getting a new phone for Christmas, which phone would you suggest for the benefits, ease of use and support? Yes, yeah, so uh, I think our recommendation for uh, Android or iOS is there's, there's some parts that are totally common. So. Um, the thing that's not obvious about using Matterport with these devices is that RAM is really important. So you want as much horsepower as you can get, but the thing that is a little more subtle, and again, this is not storage. So like if somebody says it comes with uh, 
512 megabytes of storage or one gig of storage, that's storage, that's long-term uh, memory. What we're talking about is RAM and that's working memory. And so you typically want as much as you can get, as much as you can afford. And generally, um, the, if, you're, if you're thinking of doing really large spaces, uh, the amount of RAM you've got is typically one of the actual gating items to doing really large spaces. If you're not doing giant spaces, like you're not talking about hundreds of scans, then it's, it's no big deal. It should be fine. Um, as modern as you can, latest OS. Um, if you are thinking about doing uh, phone-based capture, so rotating your phone around, I, for Android, I would bias towards a phone that has a wide, an ultra-wide field of view angle uh, camera. Almost all the flagships from all the vendors have variants that have an ultra wide field of view camera. Um, that's where we're going to start first. Uh, we'll bring it to the other cameras as well, but it's it's more tedious when you're using a narrow field of view. So things like the Pixel 5 finally has one. Um, all the Galaxy, uh, you have to work through all the different models. There's like a billion models. Um, so look for ultra wide field of view cameras if you're thinking of doing that with your phone. I hope that helps. That was That was great. Thank you so much. Next is from Rich. Uh, are you looking to add processing of mobile data, i.e. data coming in from mobile sensory systems such as the BLK to go? Yes, so this is a great question. Okay, so this instance is, um, so there's a lot of other systems that will capture 3D data. And so we are always looking at ways in which we could incorporate that into our system. So example, so the BLK, BLK to go um, is, I don't know whether it's a big brother or a cousin to the BLK360. It's a it's a mobile handheld platform, and so um, it's a it's a fairly expensive professional piece of gear that you can go through a space and wave around and basically paint the space, and you're capturing point cloud data and some imagery from that as you go through. Typically, this is used in uh, more uh, uh, documentation. Uh, situations where you need to really document the space. You need a 3D model and you need a high high definition 3D model of this. It's it's probably not so good for what we do primarily, which is tours, because you don't have that spherical imagery and the really high resolution imagery for that. But there's a really good reason why folks would say, hey, I would like to have a simple tour and I'm not necessarily concerned about the visual fidelity of that. So we are looking at experimenting with taking colorized point clouds with or without imagery ingesting them into our system and creating Matterport models for situations like that. Um, but that's still an experimental right now. So we'll have more on that when we can graduate from experimental state. And my understanding of the BLK to go is that it's a 270 ish field of view because it, it doesn't, you don't see yourself, you're holding it out in front of you and it, it doesn't see you. It's just everything kind of around you. Uh, and that's right. So, so if, that's, that's, it's like if, if we were able to pull that in, the issue would be, well, what does the tour look like? Okay, when you rotate around, uh, it, it would depend on your coverage. And so there's a lot of details. To yeah, yeah, there. yeah. That's, a, that's a complicated one. All right, next one, uh, I think I'll give you a break, Kirk. I think this one's for Amir. Um, it says, uh, I received the Pro 2. I'm very much enjoying Amir's, uh, sorry, the question just repeated, disappeared. Um, enjoying uh, Amir's videos, I believe that it was possible to auto start the highlight reel when visitors enter an asset, but I could not find out how to do this. Is this possible? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it is possible. And the way you do that is by adding a parameter, a URL parameter to the end of the link that you share with your customers, or if you're embedding it, that's the, uh, the one that you embed into your landing page. And you can find all those parameters if you go to our support page. Um, where I mentioned before, if you just go to support.matterport.com and just search for URL, uh, you'll see a little page there on the left that says URL parameters. Um, basically, if you are um, embedding this, then what you do is, I think it's uh, play equals one. It, it's ampersand, uh, play equals one, I believe. Well, actually, no, that loads. Uh, maybe it's HL, I think HL for highlight rail. So HL ampersand, you have your, your link at the end, you add ampersand HL equals one, uh, and that should automatically start the highlight reel. But forgive me, I don't remember all of them. Uh, so my best recommendation is just go to that uh, URL parameters page in the help center and check it out. Awesome. Thank you, Amir. All right. Next is from Chris. 
Uh, is it possible to update the firmware of a Matterport Pro 2 camera by using an Android tablet? Uh, yes, Chris, it should be. Um, so make sure that you're on the latest build of the Android beta. Currently, that will show V140. That's the build number. We just keep on sequencing those. So when you're connected, so you need to be signed in when you're connected to um, uh, when you're connected to your Pro 2 camera, you should receive a little notification if your uh, camera firmware is out of date and there's a newer uh, firmware package for you and you follow the flow there and it should prompt you to be able to transfer the new firmware to your Pro 2 camera and update it. Um, if you are trying that and you're having problems, uh, write to us at capture-beta at matterport.com because I'm very interested in, you know, if there's issues. Great. Uh, next one is from William. Any potential for the ability to blur matter tags in the future? Yes. Hey, Bill. Good to hear from you. Um, so uh, some of you remember may remember when we first introduced April tags, we had an option to uh, try to erase or blur April tags um, automatically. So the, so the context of the issue is I might be capturing a space that I really want to be able to have a, a great set of visuals for. But I actually don't want to have the April tag markers visible in the space because they're a distraction, right? They, they take away from the beauty of the shot. The problem is when you require them to be able to actually capture the shot, they're you know kind of a chicken and egg. You need you need them, but you want to get rid of them. Uh, we did some experiments where we were trying to auto erase them. Um, that first round was doing more damage than good, uh, so we snipped that, and we're going to be taking another run at that. But generally, the 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 notion of here's the thing, let's get rid of it, let's infill without it being too distracting is still on our radar right now, but uh, I don't have an ETA for that. Hawken, who's been on the show with us uh, for uh, a couple times, I don't know, probably a few months ago, introduced the, the blur tool, um, which uh, doesn't have, you know, the date, but that it's more manual, right? It's not automatically going around and looking for April tags. So you, it's a little bit more work on, on the user's part, but that will probably be sooner than, than what you're talking about. That's a good one. Yeah, the, Amir, that's a good one. The the issue was, so that's exactly the, the right thing, right? So you will have the ability to blur them manually in workshop when the, the manual blur tool, tool comes out. We were trying to be ambitious and just have a, a button to say, hey, I'm using April tags. Find them, get rid of them. I don't want to see them. Um, we got work to do there. All right. Juan's got another question for you, Amir. Um, it's any improvements on the ability to create videos from scan? So I think Probably, probably some of the auto-generated videos and then maybe the easiest way to generate a, a video of a Matterport model. Tour. Yeah. Um, yes. So right now, I think the, the best and um, most predictable way of doing that uh, is by recording your screen. Basically, the way I do it, I use QuickTime. Um, I set up the highlight reel the way I want uh, you know, to, to move through the space. And I just hit record on the screen recorder and hit play on my highlight reel and just sit back and, and let it go through that. Um, that's probably the most predictable way of doing it. Uh, and the best way that you can also manually navigate through the space. Um, I know there are some, some differences. Sometimes the highlight reel uh, does things. I mean, we've recently updated it. Um, so that you can more predictably, you know, rotate in the right direction and so on and so forth. Um, but some things you still have a little bit less control over. Uh, so you may want to manually, uh, you know, use your arrow keys and the uh, A, S, W, and D keys to, to kind of move around. Um, there is a, some secret things like the letter P is a good one to always keep in mind. If you're in showcase and you hit the letter P, you will see a little tiny menu come up in the top right corner and that allows you to hide the little pucks that are on the ground, the little scan positions that are on the ground. So that uh, can help with recording. That's something that uh, I believe does actually automatically happen with the highlight reel. So if you are manually going through and you don't want to see the little white circles, use that. It also allows you to change the speed at which you pan and move through the, uh, the showcase. So if the highlight reel is going through there a little bit too fast, uh, you can change that. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't yet have control over the rotation of the dollhouse uh, and zoom of the floor plan. So uh, that, you know, is probably best done through the highlight reel and just recording it. Awesome. Thank you. Next one's from Daniel here. Is there a roadmap to improve the resolution or renderings when you transition between scanned locations in a space? 
Specifically, when a user is walking through a space, the polygons are very blocky. I would love to see a transition rendered with smaller polygons. Yeah, yeah so great, great um, question. Go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, that's a great uh, question. So <laughs> this, is a, this is one of the things that the teams are constantly looking at. So this is the balance of um, how to stream enough data to your device for showcase to make sure that it's a really awesome experience, but also make sure it's fast and, and responsive. So um, if we were to stream the full resolution of everything that we've got, the problem is that um, most of the time, a lot of folks would have a very sluggish, chunky transition. So one of the things the team has been looking at is how do we optimize and do a little bit more like, you know, um, the online gaming in terms of locally streaming the best highest resolution where you're locally in the in the in the tour and then as you move to the tour uh, you know adaptively move that we don't have a time frame for that right now there's a lot of experimentation going on in terms of how to optimize that and how to improve the tours because we want to make sure that uh, again the whole ultimate goal is to make the viewer feel like they're really there and so we want to try to minimize those distractions so it's definitely um, a thing in work uh, don't have a time frame for you great Thank you so much. And then, um, I says this is Daniel again. Will there be an option to give the users that are walking through a space the ability to toggle matter tags on and off? So a little bit of customization and showcase. Oh yeah, that actually goes back to the parameters that we were recently talking about. There is a parameter uh, that you can use to uh, add to the link that will eliminate matter tags from your um, from your model. Unfortunately, it's not something that the user can do. So once you have that link sent out, it's not like the the visitor, you know, the, the person who clicked on that link can just click a little switch and go back and forth between with and without matter tags. Uh, the link that you provide either provides the matter tags or it doesn't, and, and that's that's it. There's no way of kind of easily swapping between the two. Um, but that parameter is uh, if you add ampersand MT for matter tag equals zero, uh, add that to the end of your share link and you'll no longer see those matter tags. And then uh, does Matterport have any plans to add features that would make it easier to integrate to an e-commerce website into scan spaces? We sell decorative home accessories. So we, uh, we scan staged homes and showrooms. We want to be able to tag our products so you can see in the models and then pull the shopping experience into the model. So I can, I can take this one. Uh, yeah, by all means, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, sure. So, uh, so Daniel, so wonderful that you're you're using Matterport to uh, help keep businesses going during this COVID nineteen time. Um, I'm not sure if we uh, did we do a shop talk on any of the dev tools yet. Um, we did a while back. We haven't done an update on that. Uh, okay. We do have that planned, but yeah, we, we talked with uh, Dominique back when. Yeah, so one thing I would suggest, Daniel, is to take a look at some of our developer tools, especially our uh, SDK or software development kit. It really helps generate um, a more shopping type experience for you. Um, through the SDK, you can do things like organize your matter tags, um, search those matter tags uh, for metadata. So you can do things like you know, all of the red matter tags are items that are on sale or on clearance, and people will be able to kind of uh, navigate through the model that way. Now, integrating a shopping experience, that's a little bit more advanced. Um, we, we definitely support the ability to, within a matter tag, display, you know, a 2D photo or some, uh, you know, some more detailed view of that particular item and then link out to um, a shopping experience. So we don't have anything integrated today, but we are starting to uh, you know, kind of delve into the world of retail since Matterport is really kind of key to keeping these places open during COVID-19. Um, so just go ahead and check out some of those uh, uh, items in our uh, SDK and our developer tools. Um, you should be able to create a, a more um, shopping view of a Matterport tour through those kits. All right. And then I'm not sure... Um, I know what the, I know what the system is, but maybe you, one of you guys do. It says, "Will Matterport be supporting customized Nadris anytime soon?" N A D R I S. N -A -D -R -I -S. Oh, the Nadir. Oh. That's, uh, that's the bottom. Yeah, that's the bottom hole in the in the sphere. Um, at the moment, no. This is a so for context. This is a common um, 
the question is, can you add your custom branding uh, of your company to those panos to the bottom of the tour? So if somebody looked down, they would see, uh, you know, shot by X, Y, Z. Um, at the moment, we don't. Um, I know that's common in some other platforms. Uh, at the moment right now, that's not uh, high on our list. Uh, so that's where we are at the moment in terms of uh, being able to brand those new gears. We've got a question. Is there a speak option for labels? Maybe Juan, if you can just follow up with a little bit more uh, information on that question. Um, another question is, what is the possibility of supporting a lead generation tool or chat bot? Um, Tim, are you referring to uh, a lead generation tool um, for photographers? Are you looking to see if Matterport has a chat option for you to communicate with us? If so, yes. Um, you can, you know, we have a chat uh, on matterport.com. You can reach our sales uh, and support team through those chats. If Tim, you're looking for a lead generation tool embedded in like a matter tag, for example, uh, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a totally different uh, direction, but, but possible. Maybe you want to um, just kind of uh, elaborate on that, but that is actually possible. There are some supported forms uh, with matter tags. Uh, we'd use uh, Embedly. So if you go to embed.ly, um, you can find out all the providers that they support and they do support some uh, form generators. Uh, unfortunately, not something uh, you know as ubiquitous as like Google Forms, but there, there are forms available that you can actually embed directly into the matter tag and people can fill in the information and that just goes right to you. Oh, that's great. Um, and then Daniel says, not a question. I just want to say I really appreciate that Matterport is doing this at a company. The product is amazing and has made the technology attainable to so many industries. And just a thank you. So thank you, Daniel. I think that that is it for, for our questions today. All right. Yeah. So uh, I definitely appreciate it. If you, if you got, we do have uh, another five minutes. So if anybody's got any more questions, um, by all means, uh, you know, you can hit us up. Uh, if you know you you work through and you've got uh, more questions as they uh, they come to you uh, and we just happen to not be live at the time, uh, then you can always uh, reach out to our support team uh, who does everything they can to make it as easy as possible, providing you with as many platforms as possible to get your questions answered. Um, not only do we have uh, support.matterport.com uh, where you can have access to tons of uh, you know online articles. But if you go to support, sorry, I said support at support.matterport.com is a bunch of articles. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, questions for our support team, support at matterport.com, as I mentioned before, is the email to be used. And, um, and they'll be happy to answer anything that, uh, that you may have on your mind. One last thing before we wrap up, Juan said uh, he just clarified a little bit. Instead of linking photos, uh, is it possible to embed audio files? I think we um, covered that a little bit with anything supported through the Embedly site. We are happy to include in a matter tag. So just hit up Embedly. I think it's I-M-B-E-D dot L-Y. Uh, and just look at all of the, um, the uh, 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 media uh, sources that they support. Um, and there will definitely be video and audio files in there. Yeah. And I know that there, there are, in fact, uh, but that, so, um, you know, that would be embedded in, in a matter tag, like we said, uh, Elizabeth, not so much a label, but just like the way you can embed a video from Vimeo and from YouTube, you can embed um, audio only files as well uh, from something like SoundCloud, I believe. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely something to look into. Um, we do have more and then just one suggestion, uh, somebody would love to learn a little bit more about the SDK. So if we could um, maybe plan for uh, covering the SDK uh, and API and some of those capabilities in the next shop talk, I think that would be awesome. Yes. So I mean, I don't know that uh, it's going to be in the very next shop talk, sure. uh, but I do believe that it is uh, planned for an upcoming. So definitely uh, keep your eye out on, on those shop talk. Um, webinars and and what the, the content is going to be. We do have that available if you go to matterport.com and go up into those resources tab um, that I, I showed kind of before, uh, you will see a link to uh, webinars and events and things like that. And you'll you'll be able to access um, a, a page that that has like all the upcoming uh, 
shop talk webinars and, and what we'll be talking about. So check that out. And also uh, SDK, if you are you know actively looking into you know creating uh, you know content and whatnot based on our SDK, we do have uh, again just kind of going back to our support uh, team. There is somebody on the support team who is an SDK expert. Uh, so at any given time, if you're running into issues, you know, working with the SDK, you can reach out uh, to the support team and they'll be able to answer that. Okay, that uh, pretty much it for, for questions. I think we're, we're good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, really, really great uh, webinar. Super excited uh, to see all the, the stuff that's coming through the, the, the beta pipeline uh, and whatnot. And I uh, appreciate you guys, uh, you know, using it and, and giving us all your feedback. It's just amazing. Uh, it helps us uh, obviously make it better. Yes. Um, for you all to enjoy. So again, I uh, appreciate uh, your time, Kirk and Elizabeth. Thank you so much uh, for helping us out with this shop talk. Of course. Thank you, Amir, for hosting. It's always fun. Absolutely. And again, thanks. And like Amir said, thanks everybody for great questions and also um, the strong beta participation. It really helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, appreciate it. Thanks, everyone have a wonderful yeah. holiday.